Hi, my name's Drew Wilson. You may know me as Sean from the movie Songs About Your Girlfriend, but I'm here to talk to you a minute today about micro-budget filmmaking or how we shot a movie in under two grand. I'll show you some techniques used by almost every major film studio out there. Things that could make your movie look a hundred times better and how we did them for cheap. The first step was casting. This cost us relatively nothing except for the rental cost of our local community center. Now, we had an open casting call. We advertised at local schools, college theaters, and we enlisted our local paper's help in spreading the word. This helped in several ways. We were able to find people passionate about what we were doing, and a lot of talented people from a pool of almost 200. Also, we were able to find a lot of people that were willing to work for experience and credit. Now, this is a huge asset to a micro-budget production. Also, we would recommend not working with a lot of friends or relatives. They don't take direction very well, and they tend to take advantage of you. So take that for what it's worth. We chose the mini DV format to shoot on. If you're not transferring to film, and let's face it, only about 1% of us will ever need that, then mini DV is a sound choice. And if you end up needing to transfer to film, it is possible. And if you've shot good footage, it can look nice. Shooting on DV allowed us to take a lot more takes and explore a lot more than we could if we were paying for film. We shot the entire feature on this little handy cam. We keep getting people asking us, what kind of cameras did you use? But it wasn't the camera, folks. And that brings us to our next subject, lighting. We lit the film entirely with about $60 worth of shop lights that could be picked up at your local home improvement or hardware store. And while it wasn't an easy task, we did a lot of tests before we started shooting and learned how to use them efficiently in our particular situations. There are plenty of books and articles on the internet about lighting. Be sure to do your research and practice before you begin filming. Another important feature to look for in a camera is the ability to plug in an external mic. Now you don't have to have an expensive mic. We used a small diaphragm condenser that ran on AA batteries. The other part is you want to be sure to keep the mic over your actors. We found that contraption at a hardware store. Originally used to change light bulbs, but you add a mic clip and an experienced boom operator and voila, boom mic. We were determined to move the camera whenever possible. This adds a lot of production value at a fairly low cost. We built the skateboard dolly with about $20 worth of material. You can find plans on the internet, but the basics are plywood, angle iron, nuts and bolts, and last but not least, skateboard wheels. Really, just put it together and put this baby on a PVC track, and you got an expert dolly. We also purchased a handheld unit to keep the camera level during running or walking shots. Ours cost us about 300 bucks, but you can find homemade plans on the internet. Just look up Steadicam. We even shot out of the back of SUVs and cars and pickups. Just remember, get creative and keep those shots interesting. We used a lot of locations in our movie, probably more than we should have attempted. But we got lucky and all those people let us use their places for free. Now when you're writing and if you have a location that you're unsure of, get permission first. If they say yes, then just write it in. It's good practice to make a list of all the places you'll have access to and then work those things in. Now for one of the most essential and most expensive parts of a film. You have to feed the actors. Luckily, you can get creative in this process as well. Good, but cheap, home-cooked meals like red beans and rice or spaghetti are great. And sometimes, you can even get local restaurants to donate lunches. Ask your mom or favorite aunt, but do whatever you got to. Don't let actors get hungry. We tend to get cranky and unproductive in a hurry. I hope that I've helped shed a little light on how we made a feature-length film on a shoestring budget. And since, once again, I'm not getting paid to do this, I bid you farewell. But before I go, I do recommend that you check out Robert Rodriguez's book, Rebel Without a Crew, for a little more insight and inspiration into the world of micro-budget filmmaking.